We're here at CyberScoop's Zero Trust Summit with Bruce Brody, Senior CISO Advisor at Cisco. Bruce, thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure to have thank you. Thank you for having me. Let me start by asking, so how has OMB Zero Trust uh, requirements for agencies in areas like identity and access management and multi-factor authentication, how has that impacted the government contractor community and firms like Cisco? So it's important to understand that I, uh, what, we're, what we're doing with uh, Zero Trust right now is sort of pulling together a number of concepts that have been in place for a number of years, but actually giving them uh, uh, some, some direction and, and giving them some, some impetus and putting some funding and some, and some, and some uh, direction behind them so that uh, government agencies are able to move in the same direction, act more like, a, uh, like an enterprise as opposed to separate uh, stovepipes. And, and the, the contractor community has been doing some of these things for many years and is able to uh, deliver on these, on these uh, promises so that we can get to the point where we're able to uh, remove the concept of implicit trust from the network and, uh, and go with, uh, with a zero trust, uh, trust but verify kind of a approach. Uh, next, Bruce, what challenges do you see government agencies still facing trying to maintain things like a complete inventory of authorized devices as spelled out in the guidelines or to ensure that their endpoint protection tools are properly deployed? Oh, so this is a good one because the, uh, no agency, no two agencies are alike. You've seen one agency, you've seen one agency. Uh, the concept that uh, one agency can know its entire device inventory that's a pretty massive challenge. Uh, there are headquarters at each agency, and then there are components at each agency, and then there are distributed sites across the country and across the world. And so getting a handle on the inventory of assets, it's, it's important, but it's also extremely difficult. And having the visibility to do the discovery, to be able to determine what assets you have, hardware and software and versions, uh, is, is an extremely difficult challenge. It's, it's, a, it's a high mountain to climb, but it has to be climbed, and I'm glad there's finally some, some impetus behind uh, getting that done. And then how well equipped would you say agencies are today compared to just a couple of years ago, for example, in being able to identify and isolate segments of their IT enterprise if and when they've been compromised? So the good news is uh, cybersecurity in the federal government has never been better, uh, but that's not saying much. Uh, the good news is we have a very solid team of leadership in cybersecurity for the federal government now. Uh, from Jen Easterly at CISA, Chris Inglis, the National Cyber Director, Chris DeRusha at OMB, uh, these people have all worked together for a very long time. Ann Newberger in the National Security Council, these people have known each other for decades. Uh, so there's a trust relationship and a, and, a, and a high degree of competence at the leadership level that was, you'd have to go back, I don't know how long, to, to find something even close to that in such a massive enterprise. So number one, leadership's in place. Uh, number two, we are starting to treat the federal enterprise as an enterprise, as opposed to hundreds of different stovepipes. And that's, a, that's another good thing. Uh, it's not going to be an overnight thing, uh, never is in the federal government. It is going to take a while for us to get these things accomplished, but now we know what needs to be accomplished and we have a general timeline for when it needs to be accomplished. Now we have to figure out how best to accomplish it. And then lastly, looking ahead, how would you say the OMB Zero Trust policies are altering or reshaping the investment strategies at companies like Cisco? The good news is uh, we and other companies like us have a tremendous amount of capabilities that can assist when the time comes to be able to assist. I mean, we're already in place in every agency uh, with our, the kind of technology that we have. What we're trying to do now is, is give them the time and the information and whatever other resources they need to figure out how their journey should unfold. Zero trust requires policy changes. Zero trust requires getting the right people on board, maybe changing some acquisition processes, possibly dealing with your, your data policies, uh, figuring out who owns data, who can create it, who can destroy it, who can store it, who can change it. Uh, these are all things that need to happen and you just can't, you just can't 
dump a whole lot of technology into this process right now. You've got to let the let the timelines play out, and uh, industry will be there to help them when when it's when needed. Excellent. Well, Bruce Brody, thank you as always for joining us here at the Zero Trust Summit. Thank you.